And our special guest is the U.S. Senator Jerry Moran. And uh, Senator, as we, as we hear, there continues to be more discussion of even more uh, uh, packages being worked on, uh, infrastructure being one of them. And some are saying this may be a way uh, to get something as important as the locks and dams. Now, what does that mean for for rural Kansas? Maybe not much other than the big picture. It's been something that uh, helps the flow of, uh, of, uh, of a lot of commodities that has been bottled up for years. President Trump in particular, but also House Democrats have been very interested in an infrastructure program Locks and dams, of course, for agriculture, but also roads and bridges and highways for agriculture and everyone else. Uh, and uh, I think the, the issue here is that if money is going to be spent to try to get the economy moving, let's make sure we spend money on something we would spend it on anyway. Uh, maybe we are accelerating the time in which uh, we invest in infrastructure, but we know we're going to have to invest sometime in the near future and at a time in which our country's economy is so challenged uh, and people are in need of work, uh, this is uh, perhaps a really good time to invest in agriculture. I think the issue here will be one of fiscal responsibility. Uh, we can't just keep continuing federal dollars, federal taxpayer dollars, uh, into this circumstance. We need a growing economy. There's not enough tax dollars uh, to overcome an economy that is not at work. And so if we can do this in a way that is not more, uh, is not increasing the deficit further, but it's putting people to work, generating uh, dollars into the economy. And again, on something that we would spend money on anyway or need to spend money on anyway, I think it's worth us taking a look. And again, I think that we're in, I guess, what I call phase 3.5. We've passed three major pieces of legislation, a second smaller one to add some money, particularly into the PPP program. Uh, so three and a half phases. And uh, in Washington this week, uh, in the Senate at least, uh, the discussions among ourselves began uh, once again to figure out what, if any, there is to phase four. But having said that, again, I would reiterate, there isn't enough money in Washington, D.C., because money doesn't come from Washington, D.C. It comes out of taxpayer pockets or we borrow it. And so what we do from here on, needs to we need to make certain that we're not spending money that is going to create another crisis a few months or a few years down the road when the debt and deficit comes back to uh, to kill our economy once again. Well, you and others continue to put pressure on Secretary Perdue to uh, release uh, what they know right now in the investigation of what's going on with the, the disparaging uh, difference in the cattle market. And, and you know, we talked about the Holcomb fire, and now we have the corona situation. Uh, people in the countryside are just up in arms, as, as most people are, and wanting to get to the bottom of what's really going on. Ken, absolutely. I mean, we were anxiously awaiting for a USDA report on what uh, the, the, what was the market consequences as a result of the fire at uh, Holcomb uh, at the Tyson plant in Kansas now months ago. That hasn't appeared yet. And of course, uh, the request was and the secretary agreed to expand that investigation into the circumstances we faced when meat prices were so high at the grocery store and live cattle prices were so low at the market. So it is, and we're anxiously awaiting, and I know that there's a lot of pressure. I've had a conversation with, with Secretary Purdue asking him about this topic. Uh, we will re-up uh, re that request, and I have a later uh, call this week with Secretary Northey, in which we'll have a chance to, to remind the department that there is a lot of uncertainty and a lot of angst about what's going on in cattle markets across Kansas and around the country. Before we wrap up, uh, just quickly, uh, with all the processing plants we do have in Kansas, immigration, H-2A uh, has been a big issue, looks like, for now. The situation's been resolved, but when uh, the dust kind of settles, uh, is this going to be a chance for finally reaching reform when it comes to uh, uh, immigration and, and working in agriculture? Ken, you're so right to, to emphasize the word finally. I hope that's the case. We've been talking uh, agriculture workers uh, for as long as I've been a member of Congress, the demand for those who work in agriculture, both short, short term and long term, uh, hasn't uh, diminished. Uh, and this COVID-19 virus highlights the importance of those who come to the United States to work in agriculture. So maybe this is the wake up call. 
There's a lot of wake-up calls that come from this COVID-19 presence in our country. I hope this is one of them. I clearly do. We need to get there. All right, Senator, we know you have a busy schedule, but we do thank you for the opportunity to visit with us and uh, give us the update of what's going on, and maybe we can have a conversation in the coming weeks. Ken, thank you. Thank you for the interview and the opportunity to, to uh, talk about agriculture, our state's uh, certainly most important industry. Senator Jerry Moran has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up.